Pavel Enterprises and IT&E proud to present this uh, multimedia extravaganza. And now, fighting out of the red corner, Travis Five Star Jones. <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? There you go. Congrats. Trev, wow, this is a long time coming, man. I mean, top of the world, what a great fight. What a great finish. I mean, you have been clamoring for this UFC uh, title shot, uh, and I'm, I'm so glad you got it. Just real quick, just give us the takeaway, this huge uh, you know, UFC fight debut uh, for you, Trev, uh, Five Star Jones. Man, it was crazy, man. It's been a long time coming, like you said. You guys know I've been working hard for this, and man, it was just surreal, man. They called me, what, about two and a half days notice, one and a half day to weigh in. Yeah. And I had to, I had to, all the experience, all the knowledge, everything that I gathered through the whole career had to be put into that one moment. Like, there was no other way. The weight had to be made in that time. Everything was a set agreement, and it was is one of the toughest process I had to go through, but I feel like in that three days, I grew so much as a fighter, like double of all my years because I had to use everything in that one moment, man. It was it was, it was was incredible, everything that I went through, the way I had to get to medical work, CAT scans and different places throughout Las Vegas, and it's so hot while wow, cutting weight on a day and a half notice, man. It was, How it was much crazy, did you have man. to drop? How much did you have to drop, Trev? Oh, I dropped 16 pounds um, in about a day and a half. Wow. Uh, man, let's talk about this, right? So you've been you've been clamoring for this shot. You finally get it, maybe not on the terms that you would like. Three days notice. I know some fighters might be going into this fight. Maybe the confidence is not up. But what, what did it feel like to finally know once and for all, to silence the doubters, the haters, maybe not even out here on Guam around the world, but maybe inside of you? How did it feel to, to get that W in such a convincing fashion? Man, it felt good, man, especially on short notice like that. Um, I know I wasn't my best out there for sure. I was very flat. Um, so for me to go out there and be the guy as good as he was, number one Russian prospect, a uh, phenomenal fighter, oh, man, it felt amazing to go get go out there and get it done when I knew I wasn't um, at 100%. But my mind was at 100 percent because everything that I put on the line, so it covered the little slack that I um didn't have in the time of camp or anything like that. But man, it was good, man. Not so much to the silence of doubters, um, to really prove to myself that everything I've been speaking on and working for was really worth it, and and, and I really stayed true. And I'm mostly happy about that than to like silence the doubters, man. Yeah, right. Doubters doubt only because they see you working hard and they know you're, you're in their in their lane. So they're not really doubters in a real way. They're just um, competitors. Trev, where were you when you when you got the call? What what were you doing? And then what happened when you got off the phone? I mean, were you like, oh, shit, you know, off the, you <laughs> I got a Starbucks right now, and when I got the call, I just came from having a Starbucks too. So I got the call around like seven o'clock on Wednesday night. I just came from getting my hair dyed, and um, <laughs> I came from getting my hair dyed and going to Starbucks. I just had trained. Um, oh no, I had just had trained really good on Tuesday. Um, I got a good training at Extreme Couture and Robert Drysdale, so I was feeling good. I was feeling very confident. I said, "Okay, today will be my rest day." It was actually my rest day on Wednesday, so I went to get my hair done. I got a haircut, and then um, I went to Starbucks, and then I got the call around seven o'clock at night, and then. I called up with friends, Drew Palomo, and I was like, man, they just called me to fight in the UFC, like, oh. two days, two days, <laughs> and he was like, we're all it's like going crazy, like, you're lying, you're lying, and I'm like, no, bro, they told me two days, I gotta make weight, everything, and it was, un it was, I was so fortunate, because, like, in the back of my head, I flew out here for this, man, and it's, like, so crazy, because this is exactly what I flew out for, I flew out to get a late fight, to try and get lucky, to try and get in, to try and upset someone, to try and do this to someone, and it all really came as I planned it, like. And another thing that people don't know about, like, I saw Mark Schrute get on the plane. Two days before I left, I saw him get on the plane. They blew it up on Instagram and everything. Like, Mark Schrute getting on the plane to take a late, try and get a late New UFC fight like that. And I said, wow, I'm getting on the plane, too. <laughs> I'm getting on the plane, too. I'm going to be right there. So 
I, I, I really, you know, and when you're thinking about these things in the back of your head, it feels like they're not true. It feels like they're make-believe things, but a lot of these things can come true, man. And, and that night really showed me that some things that you believe and think in can really come true because everything that I was thinking, it, it just happened, man. From the late call, I had already bought two sauna suits, sweet sweat, everything I had. So when they called me and I called my friend, I had already took my run to car and everything, and I was already at the gym running on a treadmill by wow. the time he got there. Like, mm -hmm. I was already trying to get the weight off from two to three minutes that they called me. I was already at the gym running on a treadmill. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Trev, yeah, that, man, it's just surreal. That finish was, was huge, right? A little bit of a rough start. Let's talk about uh, yeah. that. And just walk us through uh, the fight. Yeah, man, it was a good fight. Um, he was a very high-level opponent, as everyone knows. No one prospect Russia. A lot of good wins. PFL champion, I believe, which is a big... Uh, I think he made it to the finals, which he was almost about to win a million dollars at 145 pounds, which is a weight class above the weight class he's fighting in the UFC. Um, if he was going to beat me or Mark Striegel, he was going to go straight into the top 15 of the UFC. Um, so, yeah, this guy was a legit opponent. Um, 16 wins, two losses, two split decision losses. Like, he was pretty much a perfect fighter mm -hmm. that I fought that night. And, um, so, yeah, he, he was very tough, very, a lot of good movement. Like I said, of course, I was very flat because the weight cut was just the most grueling thing ever, mm -hmm. especially doing medicals. But, you know, he was, even when I watched him, I knew I was in for a tough fight. I knew he was a very tough fighter. I knew I, I had the toughness to weather the storm, and I knew once I hit back, I can hit back too. And it, it played into my favor, man. Um, we really was working on he was going to throw kicks and just keep the right check hook coming. And he really threw those kicks and he got caught with exactly what we were playing with. It, right. seemed, mm -hmm. it seems like it's not true, but we worked on exactly that the whole right. time, two right. days from the day we saw him. So everything planned out just like we wanted to play out. We knew he was going to have very high level energy. We knew mm -hmm. he moved very well. We knew he, he just was very spazzy. We knew he was flashy. Like, everything was already aware and within a day. I have good friends. I have good training partners. They believed in me, and I believed in myself, and we knew what we were against. We were against a really tough guy. He was a really tough guy. Even though I got the win, I would still say he's a really tough guy when I go through his resume. A really tough guy. Probably guaranteed the best guy I beat today. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I was in there against him in the UFC. Right. Yeah. You, you know, in the first round, I watched the first round, and that was kind of hard to watch. Uh, uh, with uh, what he was doing uh, to you. So after the first round, um, it looked like you went down, but, you know, you kept going. What did your corner tell you in that break before you went into the second round? So before the first one, the first round ended, I got a takedown. Then after I got the takedown, my corner was telling me, see, you can go back to your regular game plan. You can wrestle him. You can get this guy out of there easier. But my game plan was actually to strike because... I felt that I didn't have the proper energy or the proper weight cut to wrestle hard like my normal style. Mm. So I changed the game plan on my own to sit back and let him throw and we're going to catch him when he's tired. That was exactly the plan. Catch him when he's tired, start throwing after he slows down, take whatever he can throw and then, you know, slow him down. Like we said, we knew we had the durability. I knew I had the toughness, my corners did too. But yeah, they wanted me to get the takedown. They wanted me to press him against the fence. They wanted me to counter off the kicks. They were calling exactly that. They made sure I counter off the kicks, no free kicks. And it was a, not a free kick. It was a counter check hook off to his right low kick, and right. it got it done. Yeah. So when he dropped, uh, Trev, man, I don't, I couldn't see your eyes, but did they get big? And did you know that this was it? This was the chance to finish? Yes. Yeah, man, he got me with that nice uh, push kick in the body, man. It was a real nice one. Yeah. Like I said, very elite opponent. Like, the man was barely beaten ever he was yeah. a really tough guy i, I gotta get the respect where he was way where, where it's due he, he was a good fighter mm -hmm. i've I was heard another good fighter and good fighters also have to come back they have to take punches they have to roll with the punches and just because you get hit with a good shot don't mean the fight's over you have to always keep fighting you know he hurt me a little bit but i kept fighting I was still able to continue, and then I put him away. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I watched some of the videos after the fight, and people are saying this is one of the biggest comebacks in UFC history. And did you, you get, got fifty? Yeah, yeah you, you got, got the fifty thousand dollar bonus, right? Yes, I did. Ah, <laughs> how much did you spend celebrating last night? <laughs> nothing. Nothing yet. Nothing. 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 <laughs> no, nothing yet. <laughs> 
Right on. They ain't cash me out yet. They ain't cash me out. <laughs> all right. You make sure you get that money before you come back. Trev, yeah. what's next for you? Obviously, <laughs> I'm getting that money, boy. Yeah. What's What's next for you? I mean, obviously, you raise a lot of eyebrows at the UFC. I've seen the post fight interviews. I mean, you're doing great. There's a lot of shine, for not just for you, but for the island of Guam. Would you just rep us so hardcore, man? We We appreciate that. So, what's next? Five star in the UFC. What have they said to you? Man, uh, of course they asked me when uh, when did they want to see me back in there. Um, of course I want a full camp. Maybe December will be good. I'm thinking December will be perfect. New Year's. Yeah, December, New Year's, somewhere around there. Get a nice full camp. I'm pretty sure it's going to be another tough guy, you know, especially beating such a high ring guy already. I know it was, it was his UFC debut, but he was ranked above many UFC yeah. fighters already. It was a big test for me. I end up passing the test, so I'm expecting another tough opponent. And, um, yeah, just the right camp around December. Uh, January will be perfect for me to get back out there, and, you know, um, I'm happy. I, I hope I inspire some of the people on the island. Yeah. And because deep down inside, I know I really push, and I know I really have friends that believe in me on Guam, and um, through all the crying, through all the noise, through all the complaining at the end of the day, like, I do have a lot of loyal Guam fans and a lot of Guam people that do support me and are behind me, and I'm grateful for those guys all the time, man. And I try and just, you know, remain humble. And um, I, I fought with a lot of the Guam guys too, man. It was, through the whole process, to me, it was never as personal or anything as it seemed. It was all just the process to get where we are trying to go today. And, yeah, we're all trying to grow as a person, as a fighter, and just overall in life and... That's what life's actually about, man. Um, overcoming and always growing, making mistakes, fixing the mistakes. So we're all just trying to grow. That's all it's yeah. been. And the people that I inspire, keep watching me. I'll keep motivating y'all. Trev, man, I, I feel for you, dog, that you've wanted this for so long to see yeah. you finally get the shot and to not just come out with a W, but to put like six Guam-style exclamation points on that huge win. I'm feeling for you, man. You you keep shining, bro, and uh, God bless you. Be safe on your journey uh, back, um, and we just wish you uh, the best, uh, not just uh, for your personal life, but your career in the UFC. Appreciate you guys, man. Thank you guys so much for the interview. Hope everyone feeds off it, and you know, let's build as one. All let's right. go. Congratulations. There you go. Congrats. Yeah. Okay, Trev, be easy. Take care. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Uh, Trev Five Star Jones there, one of two Guam fighters in the U Ultimate United <laughs> <laughs> in the UFC. Right. Uh, Ten oh nine, Bree. Good job today. Good job. In closing, um, there's an issue that we.